Here's redstone dust using voltage drop. With the data in, data out wiring of the redstone dust, you're able to accept multiple inputs. You can start over here on the right side by pressing down the lever on the left or in the middle. So theoretically, with this updated version, you'd be able to pop one of the sides and then put it on the other side here. Connect it up and it will work. But since this is a different version that has the horizontal pins on the bottom, that would affect the power source. And so when you meet these up, then the positive will be going into the negative and the negative will be going into positive, shorting out the battery. What I am able to do is swap these two blocks out since they have the same orientation for the power. And so now you can see the signal goes across. And if I connect this block here, the signal goes across. Again, these two blocks have the same orientation for the pins. And this one has a flipped orientation for the power. So this was not able to swap out. This block here, though, does have the same orientation as the repeater block here. And so I should be able to swap these two out. Making sure I grab these pins that don't come out all the way. So now with the lever, you see it turns on. As well as well as turn on with the button and the pressure plate. In every electronic circuit, the resistance within the component will cause a voltage drop. Using a multimeter, you're able to measure the voltage drop of the component. For this iteration of redstone dust, I'm using Shockey diodes since they have a really low voltage drop around 0.3 volts. The low voltage drop allows it to just barely be powered by 5 volts alone. The brightness of the LEDs varies due to the voltage, and so by dropping the voltage down, you turn off some LEDs as well as lower the brightness of others. Here in the middle is a yellow LED to show the middle point. On the right side, including the yellow LED, are 15, and on the left are 16 total. The extra LED on the left side is just to show that even though it's at 5 volts, the 16th LED is able to be turned on. So in order to avoid this 16th LED to turn on, you initially supply power using a shock key diode. So instead of this wire here, you'd have another diode coming in. Making array of LEDs, some LEDs are brighter than others. You want to test out the LEDs before putting them in to see if they're the same brightness or not. For example, you can see this LED glow brighter than this one here, even though it's getting supplied with a lower voltage. This array uses a bunch of shocky diodes, and so from this middle point here of the yellow LED, this 5 volt line is connected to the positive end of the yellow LED, and on the negative end of the LED, it's connected to a 1000 ohm resistor down to ground. From this 5 volts, there is a diode going to the right and a diode going to the left. On the other side of that diode is an LED, again going down to ground through these resistors. And so each time the voltage goes through these resistors, it gets dropped by around a consistent 0.3 volts until it drops to around 1.5 volts. And once it drops below 1.5 volts, it's not enough voltage to go through the LED and down to ground. Forward voltage refers to how much voltage is needed in order for current to flow through an LED. And so if I drop the voltage down, up until around 1.5, no more current flows through the LED. And this isn't due to the resistance. If I connect the negative end directly to the negative of the LED, you can see that no current flows through. Up until I raise it to about 1.5, and the LED starts to turn on. You are able to use a microcontroller pin in order to power these LEDs. We are pushing the recommended maximum amperage of 40 milliamps per pin. The updated modular block uses vertical set of pins for the power and a horizontal set for the data in, data out. The horizontal pins make sure that no matter how they get rotated, they always meet up where in is out. 
and out is in. And even if you swap them, they still meet up. What will affect this orientation is if they're flipped upside down. Here's a circuit. It has an LED in the middle, a shock key diode, and a current limiting resistor. The yellow wires are data in and get connected to the anode of the LED and the shock key diode. The blue wires are data out, which are connected to the cathode of the shock key diode. The cathode of the LED is connected to the current limiting resistor. Black wire connects the resistor to the ground wire down below. Here are the power wires used. There are two sets of wires and the insulation is cut in the middle to expose the wire inside. Two wires are put to make a cross and then soldered in the middle as well as soldered to headers in order to connect to the pins. This design works for both the horizontal pins as well as the vertical pins by just twisting them. And so now they're in a vertical orientation. For the left and the right blocks, it's using the same little circuit here. And so it just has a, the shocky diode connecting the in to the out, as well as a power wire connecting the positive of the battery pack over and up to the LED and into this input pin here. Here's the right side, it's just mirrored. It's able to go through the shock key diode and into the output. And then input, and then output, and then input. The issue with this older circuit is that this five volts is able to go directly through this out pin. Through this out pin, it won't affect the LED here, but it will be able to continue across to the third block. And through here, it's able to send five volts through this LED circuit. In order to fix this issue, another diode is needed. Each circuit should be set up like this so that if 5 volts goes through any of these endpoints, the voltage is dropped. And so now there's a new voltage within this line that is able to go out into the other blocks. Here's how the circuit would end up looking with the input wires coming out, the output wires being after the diode and a ground wire coming off of the resistor. The circuit also allows for a stronger signal to come in. So for example, if this is three volts, allowing three volts to go through this LED, a higher voltage will still be able to come from a different point. It would increase the voltage potential to five volts instead of the three volts before and send out the higher voltage to the other redstone desk. So when making the circuits, you want to just know how many inputs you need. If it's the straight line, then you're going to need two inputs from either side. That means you only need these two shocky diodes and won't need these two here. Four inputs would take four shocky diodes. And if you wanted six full inputs, then you'd add six. In order to connect the older version to the newer version, the adapter block would just have pins on every possible rotation. It just makes it a lot easier to keep using the same blocks that I already have printed and reduce the amount of printing that I need to do. There is a downside of using this method. There's less variation within the LED if it gets powered up to 5 volts. It seems to have the same brightness throughout up until it reaches around these points here. I'll be using addressable LEDs, which have a built-in microcontroller and is able to send data throughout so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. And thank you for watching.